Amen. Praise the Lord. Turn with me to Genesis 2, 15 to 17. As we've been doing Bible study and as we've been doing some of the lessons that we've been doing, you know, when we get saved, our goal is to return to a relationship with God. That was in Genesis. But a lot of us don't really know what happened in Genesis. Now, now what I want to do is, I, I, as I told you, I've kind of gotten away from some prepared message where I come up and I have it all prepared and I finish and I, I'm done. And so I'm going to get to a point today where I stop and I'm just going to pick it up next week. Amen. 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 Because what we want to do is get the understanding of the word. Amen. I mean, and, I, and, and, and again, there are seasons in our lives. And we have to begin to recognize, for lack of a better term, what summer, what spring, what winter, and what fall. Yeah, yeah. Amen? Amen? Because a lot of times, if you wear some sort of stuff in the winter, but you don't recognize the weather, you're going to be cold. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen. You're not going to be dressed correctly. Right. So let's look at Genesis 2, 15 and 17. And the word of God, man, That's what it says. The word of God says, And Jehovah God took the man, put him in the garden of Eden, to dress it and to keep it. And Jehovah God commanded the man, saying, If every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. And so, if you look at Genesis chapter 2, but then as you begin reading chapter 2, you'll see that chapter 2 begins to tell us uh, of some specific things that happened in chapter 1. Because in chapter 1, you know, he went through and created everything and said it was good. But then when you begin looking at chapter 2, you see him creating some more things, and you're like, oh, wait a minute, he, I thought he created everything in one. Well, it's not that he he is creating new things. He's just going back and now giving some further explanations to those things that were created in chapter 1. Amen? Amen. And so he, 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 he took man and put him in the garden of Eden to, uh, to, to dress it and to keep it. Now, man had a job. Understand this. God gave man a job. And in, in, in chapter um, 1, he gave man dominion. And actually, if you read it, he gave dominion to man and woman. If you read it, but, but people will take that and say that the dominion was just given to man. But if you read it in, in, in verse, in, in, in chapter 1, the dominion was given to man and woman. And so God gives man uh, a job. He gives him instruction. And he gives him free reign over everything. God, he makes him God over the earth. He gives him dominion. But he always gives him one commandment of what he shall not do. Do you know that that you know it it, it it started with the one, and then it went to the Ten Commandments, and by the time we got out of the Old Testament, it was six hundred and thirteen things you couldn't do. Amen. Amen. Then we got in the New Testament; it was just love the Lord God with all your heart, and love your neighbor as ourselves. Amen. So back and back and forth, go back and forth. And so, as God began looking at man, now he already gave man a job. He, he, he began to fellowship with man, and, and he began to realize the first thing that was not good. He said it was not good that man should be And when he said that in verse 2 and 18, Genesis 2 and 18, he says, the Jehovah, Jehovah God said, it is not good that man should not be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. And that particular short statement, what God does is 
marriage, and that is loneliness, companionship. That is the reason he says it's, it's not good that man should be alone. See, a lot of times what we've done is uh, we, we men become great providers, but they're not good companions. And you weren't created to be great providers. You were created to be companions. She was created to be a companion for men. Uh, the woman was made to be, but she can't be a companion if you refuse to be a companion to her. Now, 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 let's look at this. In verse 2, 19 to 20. I'm just about, let's just talk, don't talk about the word, though. I'm just talking about the word right now. In, in 19 to 20, now, you would have thought that the minute that God said, it's not good that the man be alone, that he would create a woman. But he didn't create one. He now begins to see how man will operate in his job. He gave him a job, and then now he begins to see how he will operate in that job before he gives him uh, the land. He says, and, and out of the ground, the Lord formed every beast of the field. Now, we know in, first, in chapter 1, he already created everything. But now he's just, he's just getting a little small snippet of what he did in, in 1. He said, he said, and the Lord formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air, and he brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found and help meet for him. Now let's you gotta understand. Everything that existed walked past Adam. And he said, this is a cow, this is an ant, this is a, a caterpillar, this is, I mean, well, whatever went by Adam, Adam named it, and it is still that name today. Amen. Amen. Because that was his job. Now, the Lord said, Adam was, well, for Adam that was not found, help me for him. Now, now, here God, and he says, I will make him a help meet for him. And he says, and, 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 and as he went over everything that he said, now, I didn't see any help that would meet for him. That word meet meant suitable. I did not see. God said, I don't see any help that's suitable for him. So then what he said was, he said, he created a woman. And he says that, she was designed or envisioned to eliminate loneliness, but then she was designed to envision to eliminate loneliness, but designed to be a helper. And see, that, that, that particular design feature of the woman is, 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 is we don't, we don't, it's underappreciated. See, the woman is designed uh, to, 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 to be and to do whatever she can do and be uh, that's needed for that family. See, when we, when we look at the word helper, the world has made us to, to envision that that word helper is some kind of second class citizen. But see, if, 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 if you look at the woman, y'all don't ever remember that, that, that um, commercial stuff that I'm dating myself, but I can bring home the bacon, yeah, yeah, yeah. right off in the pain, yeah. and never ever let you forget you a man, right? right? I can do everything because I'm a woman. Now, as women live, uh, 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 taking advantage of this design feature of the woman. Yes, understand this. When in, in a household, when a when a father gets sick, everything still works. That's right. That's right. Except mama's like, oh, daddy ain't nothing but a big baby. Yeah. I need this, I need that, right? Right? Yeah. But if mama gets sick, everything. 
It says her protector. He, he, he's, he's, respo- he's her responsibility. That's the word. She is his responsibility. And I really don't care. I mean, I mean, it, it, the world has uh, uh, perverted this. And, and, but, but, but until a woman is married, she is the responsibility of her father. And if her father's not there, she's still the responsibility of the father or surrogate of the father. But she is, but she is given to a man who stands there, and he's not given away. He stands there and says that I will now accept the responsibility, Father, that you have. And I will now, I will now take care of her the way she should be taken care of unto death. He, 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 he tempts her to challenge 
about the Word of God. Satan leads the woman to question the validity of her husband's understanding of God's instruction. And he says it in his own way. He says, he says you shall not surely die. For God does know that the day that you eat thereof, your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as God, knowing good and evil. I'm going to develop this point, and then I'm going to be done. We will pick this up. The woman was designed Everybody. 
like this one, and I don't really like the ball, and I don't really like how he kick it with me, and I don't really like, so I just find you a ball. But guess what God sees? You can win nothing. All right. That ain't, that ain't, that ain't good. Good. So he took it. What he did was the devil took the woman to disregard her husband's instruction and, and disobey God in order to improve her husband's position in life. She didn't just do it for any reason. She did it to pass. I just want to help her. I just want to help her. That's the first lesson. When you want to help somebody and it involves disobeying God, it's perverted help. Oh, 
God said, but he allowed the love that he has for his life to make him disobey God. The love, the, the love you have for each other can never supersede my obedience to God. And at this point, 